Hi everyone, Nigel Channing here with Rhyme Signatures, the nerdiest music review this side of being the most disappointing thing to happen to imagination since you speculated what earwax might taste like. And today we are going to be doing a review of the new David Maxim McKick album, Bilo 4. <laughs> First off, my sincere apologies to the artist of the cover of this record for having to censor it in such fashion, but I'm just a little guy on YouTube, and I don't want Daddy Google to stomp me for showing nipples in my thumbnail. Sometimes you wait a very long time for a follow-up record. Sometimes it feels like an eternity, and sometimes you almost forget that one was coming. This one kind of falls into both categories in a way as I was waiting for a follow-up to Bilo 3.0 for a very long time, and I was almost placated by 2017's Who Bit the Moon, but not quite. Honestly, all that record really served for me was a speed bump on my frenzied crusade for when the actual ball buggery is Bilo 4 coming out, Mr. McKick. But my dear mother in her infinite wisdom always taught me, much as many other people's mothers most certainly did the same, that good things come to those who wait. Little did I know how true these words would ring in respect of this record in particular, but it's a funny old world really, isn't it? Yeah, it's been nine years since Bilo 3.0 came out, the seminal and oft-praised EP from Serbian multi-instrumentalist, composer, and all-round excellent musical fellow David Maxim McKick. To say that a lot has happened in my life in the intervening years would be putting things very politely. I started shaving my head, I grew a great big bushy beard, I moved house, I ate some Reese's Pieces. Clearly, lots of very significant changes, I'm sure you'll agree. One thing, though, that hasn't changed is how much I adored Bilo 3.0. This remains for me the de facto gold standard of modern progressive metal EPs, and deserves to be lauded as such to anyone who'll pay attention to my ceaseless wheezing about music and whatnot. It was every bit as creative, ambitious, adventurous, and epic sounding as anyone could have hoped for, and I still regularly revisit it. Hence my high hopes for Bilo 4, though. Admittedly, these expectations were a little bit tempered by Who Bit the Moon, which I honestly found to be somewhat average in its quality. But nonetheless, the Bilo EPs have been McKick's driving force, his signature brand, and the most ubiquitous of his works. So the hype lived on. I was confident that he would deliver something truly for the ages. And of course, I am beyond delighted to say that Mr. McKick has not only delivered in this respect, he's only gone and dropped a megaton of excellence onto us. 2022 has been doing a lot of this throwing records at me in late November to futz with my beautifully crafted year-end list. And while the frustration I feel in having to once again rejig my list is palpable, given the quality of this record, I'm more than happy to let Mr. McKick off the hook. Bilo 4 is a wonderful, deeply personal, and masterfully crafted work of art. This is not a uh, this is not structured like a traditional album, and as such, I don't really think it should be looked at as such. It's not a bumping lead single or a party anthem, the ballad, the TikTok song, etc., etc. This honestly feels more akin to a soundtrack in terms of its overall mood, structure, and feeling. McKick has himself gone through a lot of personal changes since his last release, including becoming a father, and Bilo 4 feels like an immediate response to the changes in his own life and how he has reacted to that. Things start off feeling like an introduction to a Studio Ghibli movie, with the absolutely gorgeous instrumental of Crumbs. It sets up a plaintive, heartfelt mood as soft piano keys paint a watercolour picture of him sitting out in the woods and staring up at the twinkling stars in the night sky. It's simple, uncomplicated, and utterly mesmerising. String work accentuates the mood really well, and it's hard not to let your emotions get to you, even with these opening minutes. As far as openers go that really give you a sense of what was running through the artist's mind, this one is really hard to beat. Things segue into the brief but equally beautiful Of Bliss, which provides exactly what its name implies. Soaring, triumphant sounding guitars are the order of the day here, setting out exactly that feeling, Bliss. It's short but sweet, and McKick wastes no time firing into the first meat of the album with the literally impossible to pronounce, for me at least, third track, so we'll just call it track three for now. 
This feels like classic Bilo, and showcases McKick's ability as a musician really quite beautifully. It's an intimate but chaotic slice of a man's soul. Every single note feels so utterly precise, deliberate, and carefully selected. The tone is of course gorgeous and full, with the production making sure every single instrument pops out perfectly. This is a marvellous experience with headphones on, and track 3 is the first of many on this album to demonstrate just how much time, care, and attention has been put into the creation of this record. The majority of the album is instrumental, it has to be said, and DX2 Is Me, the one that follows up track 3, is probably the most accessible of the songs on this album. Although that being said, Bilo 4 is by its very nature not something that can really be split apart into singles and whatnot. This, however, nonetheless served as the only pre-release single on the album, and it's an absolute beast. Stonking riffs, huge scope and ambition, addictive melodies, and always with that amazing guitar tone that's truly become McKick's signature sound. It's a playful tune, still evoking that feeling of contentment and bliss that the record started with, swelling guitar lines carry you over massive mountains, and I get goosebumps just thinking about the feeling of this track. It's a wonderful example of how less is truly more, and just how talented a composer McKick is. To instill such feelings of joy with relatively simple instrumentation is a rare talent, and this song is a great ambassador for just how good he has gotten at doing this. The album does take a more sombre turn with Of Grief, which, as you can probably imagine, much like Of Bliss, does exactly what you'd expect. It's a tasteful segue though, and doesn't give you any degree of tonal whiplash from the preceding works. It is again only brief, but McKick says a lot in this interlude, really showcasing his ability to work with perpendicular moods on the same record. Fading Memories is a more piano-driven piece compared to the soaring guitars of the early tracks on the album, and it's frankly one of the most gorgeous pieces on the record, backed up by guitars, strings, brasswork and more, all floating in tastefully and making for one of the most reflective sounding pieces of music I've heard all year. It feels appropriate that it follows up from Of Grief, as it certainly carries the torch of that mood. This is easily where the album feels the most movie soundtrack, and I honestly wouldn't be surprised at all if McKick is looking, or has looked at some point, to score some independent films in the future. The man seems to have a real talent for this kind of composition. Moving on to Away, and honestly right until the end of the album, is where we see a transformative process on Bilo 4, and the record blossoms into something truly special. This is where we start to have the introduction of vocals, and the delivery of Alexandra Jelmas on this track in particular is nothing short of breathtaking. She is delicate, pleading, heartfelt and mesmerising. Gentle passage soon gives way though to massive Devin Townsend-esque walls of sound, and the album jumps into one of its two shining stars with Cry. This nine minute track is an absolute treat, and easily one of the best songs of 2022. McKick embraces the previously mentioned Devin Townsend sensibilities, and has honestly crafted something as tall as Everest and as expansive as the Grand Canyon. Guest vocalist Vladimir Lalique wastes little time in establishing himself as a powerhouse with few comparables. The sense of Progressive melody and sinister, distressing atmosphere on Cry is superb, and serves as both a spine chiller and a jaw dropper in equal measure. Honestly, you are not prepared for just how good Lalik sounds on this, and just how full and complete the instrumentation is on this track. The experimentation and flexibility that is shown off here puts this firmly into the category of modern prog metal classic for me ticking every single possible box in my personal checklist of tastes. Oh, but we're not even done yet, not by a long shot, no no. The final of interlude of Hope, just like its predecessors, Bliss and Grief, instills precisely that in you. I not lying here when I legitimately forgot to breathe towards the end of this one the first time I listened to it. It's just so utterly bewitching, and it serves as this incredibly perfect palate cleanser before we jump into the second big boy track of Wedding. Cry is the more straightforward of the two nine minute plus tracks, whereas Wedding is most assuredly the experimental one, featuring odd choral lines, bizarre and off-kilter instrumentation. Right from the offset you can tell this one's going to be a bit weird, and this unusual nature runs right through the core of the entire track, never settling in for anything less than a quirky experimental slice of the deepest parts of McKick's creativity. 
The chanting vocal sections give me familiar vibes to some of the music from the video game Tetris Effect, in the best possible way, of course, and it's an incredibly stark and angular inclusion that works remarkably well. Alexandra Gelmas once again takes front and centre for lead vocal duties and just makes me wish she was featured in more albums. Oh, she's absolutely incredible and demonstrates a fearless and impressive range of vocal ability on this track. From screams to scat, from diva to devil, it's honestly fascinating to listen to and she truly elevates this final part of the record. The album closes out with uh, Are We There Yet? and Gelmas again dominates blasting us with desperate and longing vocals. It's a beautiful, somewhat stripped down and very honest finale, leaving you stunned by the 53 minutes of exquisite creativity that you've just sat through. In case I hadn't made this clear already, I adore this record, and I have been kind of struggling to listen to anything else since this came out, and I'm very annoyed with how it's forcing me to rejig my top 15 records so easily and so effortlessly. I really don't have very much in the way of criticisms to levy at Bilo 4. I've seen some discourse of the internet bemoaning the amount of filler tracks on here, but I genuinely believe that to imply that this is a negative is kind of tantamount to complaining about there being too many cash register noises or clock sounds on Dark Side of the Moon. These interstitial tracks are requisite to the overall mood of the album, and without them, Bilo 4 could just be any other progressive metal album, albeit a very, very good one. It is the soundtrack-like elements and these smaller, atmosphere-building tracks that complete this album and elevate it to being one of the best releases of 2022 across all genres. So, what else can I say about Bilo 4 at this point? Honestly, this is exactly what I wanted from The Kick. It's his most honest, personal and exciting work to date, and it represents a development and maturity from his songwriting that I could only have dreamed of. Bilo 3.0 was and still is a magical and very important release for me, and one I always doubted he could ever do better than. I am delighted though, of course, in this instance to be proven completely wrong, as McKick has 100% crafted his finest work to date, and this is something he should be immeasurably proud of. As always, guys, you should know at this point this is all just my opinion on the record, so if you have listened to this one, do please let me know what you thought about it in the comments down there. I know we're almost at the end of 2022, but there is anything else this year you think maybe I should check out, maybe I won't get around to giving my own thoughts because we're running out of time here, but I'd still love to hear it. I'm always up for hearing more music. Let's go. 2023 coming soon. Award season is on the way. If you like this video, please do share it with anyone who you think might enjoy it, and please always do consider subscribing for more content, and if you enjoy what I do, please also consider clicking my coffee link down below. Until next time, guys. Keep your rhyme signatures odd.